about the HWBOT World Tour here in uh, Sao Paulo for the Latin America event. And we did the workshop in Portuguese just before, and now we're going to do the same one in the... Um, uh, we do exactly do the same one in the... Uh, I'm going to say that. Yeah, in English, that was uh, what I was thinking. And um, let's go. Are you guys ready for it? Okay. So first of all, do you know overclocking or not at all? No, you don't know overclocking? Okay. So the very basic thing, overclocking, we increase the, the, the frequency of the system to gain more performances. The ultimate goal is to have more performances. If you do overclocking and there's no performances increase, it's useless. So you increase the frequency of your CPU or your memory or your system, and you have more performances for that. We will explain you exactly how this works, and that will be very easy for you guys because you can do everything from Windows. Okay? So um, before we used to do overclocking to play more games or have more FPS in the games, etc. But today the CPU are extremely powerful already. You just like buy the hardware and it's actually quite okay. Um, so we do that now to compare about what we can do with the same hardware. Here we have exactly the same system five times. So I will teach you on this one and then you will try after on the other ones. And the goal for you is to beat the other guys. Okay? So it's like everyone plays the same game on the same you know, computer, but the, the person that wins is the person that played the best on it. Okay? So uh, just a little bit of presentation about why we are doing this. Uh, we are doing this because we are part of uh, HWBot, so that's the organizer of this. So that's the, uh, the, the cute logo with the cute, uh, the cute robot on it. HWBot is a database for all the scores. So all the score you do with the benchmark, I will come back to that after, all the scores you do when overclocking are validated by HWBot. So you have the Guinness World uh, Book for the world records, and we do have HWBot for the overclocking uh, scores. So we have like a lot of scores, and we want to promote overclocking like this as a fun thing. It is fun. Like, we, otherwise, we would not be here anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I was talking about HWBot, scores, and benchmark. Benchmark, we will go back to exactly what it is after. It's just a piece of software that do the calculation always the same. So it's like running, uh, you know, like uh, a racetrack is always the same, right? So it's kind of like you do one turn of the racetrack, and the faster you go, the higher your score will be. The goal is to be to have the the fastest the fastest score. Okay. So basically, overclocking it can be compared to car racing. So people, it's like you give people exactly the same car, or you give people the same limitation. Like in Formula One, it's, the, it's not the same car, but they have limitation on how much uh, gas they can use, how much weight can be. So there's a lot of limitation for, for this. And they have the same circuit, the same racetrack, and they have to be the first. So for us, it's the same. We have limitation or the same uh, hardware, and we try to be the first by changing some of the settings or making sure that everything is smooth and doesn't crash. Okay. When we do overclocking, there's a few uh, things to keep in mind. Your, your CPU and motherboard, when you buy them, that's how it is right now. You, it's like we just bought the motherboard, the CPU, and the memory. We just plug them, and it's working like this, as this performance. So it's like doing a first turn on the track to see no how far how fast you are at the beginning and then you want to increase that step by step to increase that we want to increase the frequencies and we want to change some of the settings to be faster so first first of all we will um, we will check um, how fast we are right now so for that we'll be using uh, a piece of software that is called Intel extreme tuning utility we call that XTU because that's the initials. And this software has been um, the result of the work between HWBot and Intel. So Intel is actually official Intel software, and you can submit directly your score to HWBot. So it's very well integrated. So that's why we use it. It's very easy for you guys. When we have this uh, XTU thing, 
we have a lot of information about what kind of CPU we have, what kind of uh, motherboard, what kind of memory we have. But for today, we'll focus on the CPU frequency because that's where we will have most of the improvements in the um, in, in the in the scores. I told you the benchmark is like doing one turn of the track, so we want to try one turn at the very basic level to see if we are going as fast as as fast as we can now before changing the settings. A CPU frequency. So you, when you buy a CPU, like Intel says, oh, this CPU is 3.2 gigahertz, for example, like this CPU. It's not 3.2 like this. It's 100 megahertz. So that's what we can see here, re reference, reference clock. So what we call that base clock. So this one is 100, pretty much all the time on the latest CPU. It's 100, and you have a multiplier. So that's the coefficient here, 32. So 32 times 100, 3200, so 3200. So it's 3.2 gigahertz. Okay, so that's how we uh, we have the frequency for the processor. And we have a lot of uh, other settings because this one is just the frequency for the CPU itself. So it's uh, how fast it's calculating, but there's also some other settings like uh, the cache. So that's how fast it will interact with the memory, for example. So all these settings, you need to find out the best way to have all of them working close to the limits to have the best performance for what you have. OK, for that, any questions? No? Good. So we are doing the, the first track, the first uh, you know, turn on the track, and we will have a score. This score is about like 220, 225. Usually it's like this for this specific hardware. If I have another CPU, it will be a different score. Okay. But here, all the systems, if you don't change anything, it's 220, 226, 225. Okay. If we want to increase the frequency of the CPU, we have the two choices. We can change the multiplier, that's the easy way, or you can change the base clock. So the base clock, I told you, that's the thing that starts here at 100 megahertz. And this one, you, you can change it, but it's a, it's a reference. It's called a uh, reference clock. That means this clock is used by a lot of different components on the motherboard. So I told you it's used for the frequency of the CPU with the 32 multiplier. It's used for the cache, for the communicating with the memory. So it's another multiplier. By default, it's all those 32, but you can change it differently from the C from the CPU frequency. It's used for all the uh, internal and external communication with all of the uh, external uh, other stuff like the USBs and so on. So this 100, if you increase that one, you influence on a lot of different components. So you cannot increase that much. Usually like five, six megahertz is good. <laughs> Sometimes, like the people that do extreme overclocking, like the very like the professional guys, they can go like 20, 25. They they can go even higher. But on these setup, I, I don't expect you guys to go over like 105. Okay, so you can increase that, but 32 times 5 megahertz more, it's not that much. It's like 60 megahertz uh, in, in the end. Uh, no, it's more than that. I don't know even I don't even know how to calculate this. <laughs> so 32 times 5 times 5 well anyway <laughs> 166 right 160 something yeah, 160 okay 160 <laughs> and that was live oh damn it <laughs> okay but if you increase the multiplier by 1 so you come from 32 to 33 it's like 100 megahertz more and if you do from 33 to 34, it's two mega, 200 megahertz more. So just by changing the multiplier, you, you already increase much more than what you could. So what we do is we always try to test where we can go with the multiplier for a certain voltage. And voltage is a new thing for now. You have the frequency though. Base clock, multiplier gives you the frequency, and you have the voltage. So that's how much electricity you send to the CPU. Of course, you need electricity for this to work, so you need to send him a special uh, voltage, special uh, kind of electricity for, for it to work. 
by default, the, the CPUs, depending if it's like a, a, a Pentium CPU or a Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, they have different uh, voltage. The, the default voltage is different. So for the benchmark, if we have a reference, uh, I will explain that when I can. Uh, oh, I will explain the voltage uh, right after that. So you have the voltage can be 0 0.95 volts or it can be 1.05 volts. But for you guys today, I think it's like 1.05, and we can we can start overclocking at 1.2 directly. It's safe. Okay. I will go back to the voltage uh, right after I explain you about this. Because it's going to be too much at once after that. OK. So remember, we're doing one uh, one turn on the track. And our score is 226. Kind of expected for that. <laughs> so we can see that the maximum processor frequency was 3.2 gigahertz. So that's the maximum frequency our CPU was uh, working at. And we had a maximum CPU temperature at 58 degrees. We could have followed this. Uh, right here. So in the, the orange line is the CPU frequency. The greenish line is the temperature of the CPU, and the blue line is our the percentage of usage of your CPU. So when it's 100%, that means it's very used, and when it's like this now, it's like less than 10%. It's like idle mode, so it's like not doing anything pretty much. And you can see that the the frequency here did change because we are at like 1 gigahertz or 0 0.9. The CPU today, they when they are not used, they don't run full speed. They just run at the default or the low speed. So that's why you can see like the memory, the frequency is changing here. OK, 58 degrees, that's far from the limit. We have a, we have a lot of uh, margin for that. And usually people say, oh, 80 degrees is the maximum. Well, you can you can make the CPU run at 80 degrees. The maximum CPU temperature is uh, 100 degrees. Usually, it will crash before, <laughs> so no worry. <laughs> okay. I will go back to the settings and how to overclock. I want to show you how to first submit that score because that's something you will have to do on your system. When you have a score, you want to see. So you do you do the turn on the track, but you have nothing to compare with. So you need to know how fast were the others. So for that, you can compare online. And it should open your browser. Yeah. Um, why don't you bring your laptop and your cooler to, to ask him how to improve the, the overclock? <laughs> no, uh, I'm asking you super later. OK, so when you do compare online, that will Take your score and all your information from the settings and put them on HWBot. So we have a lot of score to compare with. So we can share that score with our friends. So let's say you try and you want to show your friends, hey, look, I did that. So you can just get to this page and get your score and send that link to it. And OK, you see the frequency that the, the, the reference clock you were using, the processor core ratio you were using. You have all the information about your CPU you were using, the motherboard you were using, like all the details. All the details. So that's good if you want to share with your friends. You can analyze your your score. We'll go to that one after. You can analyze the score. And this is where we are. This is the score that we just submitted, the 226. So we know we are here, but there's people that did 20 points with the exact same CPU. Because we are looking for that exact same CPU on all the mother and from everyone else. Like 226 seems to be like the, the default. And there's people that did 321. Yeah, it's because you, you, you can submit anonymously or register for it. No, it's not the hackers. Uh, <laughs> it's not the I same know, one. It is, it is. <laughs> so this is the account of uh, Alex. So he's uh, one of the good overclockers from Brazil. And he has a lot of different scores. So you can see that you have like 274, 274, 279. 
with actually this motherboard and this CPU, like the exact same setup. And you also have at 4.7 on another motherboard and another motherboard as well, 4.9 gigahertz, 333. Yeah. And I think the we don't have it here, but the fastest uh, CPU for that one, I think it's like 6.1 gigahertz, but it's using liquid nitrogen and all that. So for today, we will focus on using the stock cooler. So that's when you buy the CPU, you have this cooler with it. So just for you to know what you can do uh, so far with that. Okay. Okay, that's cool. I know how to compare with the uh, with the others, so I know there's space for improvement. I can do better than that. If you want, for example, you want to uh, send your settings to someone, or you want to, you know, try again the settings you use. You can always download here, and all the settings you had in the application, you can download them and just re-import. Re okay, so that's actually good if you want to reuse the same settings. Okay. Yep. Good question. So the uh, I will repeat for the guy on the live. So the question was, if we run the CPU too high in temperature, would that decrease the performances? The answer is yes, it can decrease the performances, but it will not decrease the life of your CPU. Let me explain. When it's too high in temperature, there's a safety system in the CPU that makes it run lower. So maybe you put like 4.2 gigahertz and it's like at 90 degrees or 99 degrees. And when it's going too, too hot, it's actually not running at 4.2 gigahertz. It's running back at like 2.4, 2.2. 3.2, it's actually reducing the uh, the so frequency. We did overclocking for, I think, 32 of what flies. <laughs> yeah, the multiplier reduces itself to it. So usually it's like uh, times 8 or times 10. So it dropped to like 8. So it's like 800 megahertz. So it, it's very low, but it doesn't eat anymore. So that's that's how the CPU is, uh, have a safety uh, measure on it. When you're No, not much. The not that much. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want people to know. And the last thing you can do when you have a score is to go compete. And that's why we are here today, because we want to compete with the other guys. So you, you have like the details of your system. You can fill in all the information. But for today, you just have to select what kind of cooling solution you're having. When we do overclock, so we increase the frequency, but we increase the voltage, and all that increase the temperature. So if you let the default voltage and increase the frequency, it will increase the temperature. For each voltage you put more, it will increase the temperature even more. Okay, so we have to find the right balance between the right voltage and the right frequency, and all the other settings around that. <laughs> and we're just talking about the CPU right now. Huh? <laughs> If you want to go higher, you can try to get a better cooling solution. So from this to a water cooling, for example, or from water cooling to liquid nitrogen, maybe one day. <laughs> so that's why the guy doing extreme overclocking, they use liquid nitrogen. It's super cold. It's like minus 196 degrees. So almost minus 200 degrees. It's super cold. So they can reach as much as they can without hitting the limit for the temperature. So here we choose standard stock cooling. So that's the default cooling solution that we have. And yes, I agree to the rules that I did not need. Uh, I did not cheat or I did not make the system thinks it was running faster than it was. I, I show you now because that's what we will, you will have to do for each score that you have. You need to submit them. Why? Because you can rank and go against the people that. We have here the World Series 2016 Latin America Amateur Qualifier. So that's the competition for you guys. So only people that are amateur are participating in that one. The Extreme Overclocker have a special competition just for them because, of course, they will win. <laughs> so you click Participate. It says, oh, yeah, you are four. 
43rd with that score. So if we go to the competition page, that will show like all the people actually checking. So if I check, there is like a 42 person that did participate and we are 43rd. So we are the very bad one. We are the very low. So we can do much better than that. Um, you have hwbot.org. So that's the database. So all the scores, all the uh, settings, you can compare your scores with, uh, with your friends or with other people online. And you have oc-esports.io, so OC Esports. And this one is only for the competition, only for the competition. So all the official competition of overclocking are actually on this site. So we can find, for example, we can find who is the best overclocker this year so far for 2016. So it's like three months. It's uh, Delhi from Italy that is the first, the best overclocker for this season. Last year, So last year, for the for one year, that was Extreme Addict that was the best overclocker in the world on all the competition. Okay, that's for the competition. So you have ranking for who is the the fastest CPU, who is the fastest graphic cards, and stuff like this. Okay. Question about uh, the ranking and how to participate in the competition. Okay. So let's go back to this. Cool. We did the first track, the first you know run on the track. Fine. Okay, what do we do now? We need to go faster, right? So, you go to all control because you're gonna have everything in there and that's gonna be much easier for me to explain you guys. There's a lot of settings, but don't worry for you guys, it's gonna be focusing on just a few. First one, base clock, reference clock, the 100 thing. You can change it if you want, but for now, it's not the focus. We need to, we want to try with the multiplier at first because that's the easiest one. Multiplier, multiplier is here. So we are at 32. Okay, let's say we want to go. Four gigahertz. You have only two core on this CPU, so you can do one core four gigahertz and the other one 3.2, but it's useless. Oh, it's better to have both running at four. Sometimes when you are very close to the limit, you want to have one that is running faster than the others. But for you guys, in 30 minutes, you won't have the time to find out which one is the best. So keep this as the, uh, as the same, and, uh, it's gonna be okay. So if we look on the right side of the screen, right here, all that is in white is the actual settings. So that's what the settings is used right now. Everything in yellow, that, that is what we will change if we click apply, okay? If you look at core voltage, it's one volt. Right now, one volt. So it's not that much, but maybe it will work. Seems to work, so we can go back benchmarking and run the benchmark. So went from 3.2 gigahertz to four gigahertz. So that's it, you already overclock more than what you could get from the default settings. So we'll find out um, how much do we have here. You can look here for the monitoring. So we know that uh, we will see that the CPU is being used at almost 100% all the time. The CPU temperature is not that much. Oh, damn, I have the same issue. Peter? I have the 3.2 lock again. 3.2 gigahertz lock again. Okay. Okay, so sometimes there's some... Uh... Yeah, so some, some bugs, so I need to restart the system. But you, you guys won't have to do it because the other system are actually um, ready for that. So when you have like um, you increase the frequency, you increase the voltage, you you always have the temperature issue. I know here it's quite hot, so I will let Peter do uh, do the settings. And you, for you guys, you will start at we we were starting at one volt. We can start at one point two. It's safe. Okay. So when you do the overclocking, you can already start at one point two volts, and from there you can try to find like where it's going and so on. Because for these kind of CPUs, we know that 0 0.2 volt more than default, still fine. Okay. You reach the, you increase the frequency, and then it doesn't work anymore because it's no, it's going too fast for what it can it can have. It's like the car is going too fast and the tires doesn't stick to the road anymore, so it's, it's it doesn't work and it crashed. 
you increase the frequency and it crashed. So what do you do? You either come back a little bit before and you, you try to do the benchmark. So the five minutes you have for the benchmark to run, if it passed, good. But you can go higher. So you can increase the voltage a little bit, like 0 0.25 or uh, 0.025 or 0 0.05. So 1.2 to 1.25 volts, for example, and try again. Maybe this one will, will pass. If it passed, good. You know the limitation was your voltage. If it's getting too hot, maybe you should reduce the frequency or reduce the voltage. So you always have to play with these settings, the frequency and the voltage you supply, because that's what will make the heat in the end. Is that okay? Okay. It's always step by step. Because if you want to go 4.4 gigahertz right away, usually it won't work. If, if you go 4.4 gigahertz right away, like, okay, I want to go 4.4 gigahertz now, you never know. Because you don't know if the frequency will be okay for the voltage that you have, or the voltage might be too high and you cannot change it after. You, you cannot adjust. You don't know if you want to increase or reduce. Uh, point. So 1.2 volt, it's safe to start. And then you go step by step and you try to reach uh, higher frequency. Okay, so let's start again. Oh, we are at four gigahertz. It kept it kept the settings. So I say 1.2. So voltage. I told you there's the core voltage. So that's the that's the electricity we send to the CPU for it to work. But there's also some extra voltage for other uh, other part of the CPU or other part of the system. You have the cache voltage and the cache ratio. So the cache ratio, that's the ratio I told you that you can change for having the memory working faster. Memory as the, the memory itself as a frequency, but the, the 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 thing inside the CPU as well as a frequency. So you have to you know, increase all of them to get the best performances out. The core voltage, that's going to be absolute. So 1.24 volts, that's what you will be sending to the CPU. There's something else here, the uh, core voltage mode. So it can be um, adaptive or static. Adaptive means it's extra volts, that's extra electricity you send to the CPU when it's in the turbo mode. And I will come back to that right after. And static is, is you're always sending that. Turbo mode. We saw before, and I explained to you that if the CPU is too hot, it will reduce the frequency by itself. Okay. For the past four years, pretty much all the CPUs, Intel or AMD, when it's not too hot, they overclock themselves. They auto overclock themselves. And that's called the turbo mode for Intel, the turbo boost for uh, the Intel CPUs. So a CPU is just basically like a, you know, like a calculation uh, uh, pieces, the pieces that do the calculation, and they have a certain amount of heat they can dissipate. I think this one is like 45 or 65 watts. So when it's cold enough, and you don't didn't reach that 65 watts yet, the CPU can say, "Okay, maybe I can overclock two cores, two multiplier more." There's always a limit. Usually, it's like two or four multipliers. So. Like 3.2 gigahertz will never go to 4.5 gigahertz, and this auto adjusts the uh, the frequency of the uh, of the of the CPU to work it faster. Okay, so it can auto underclock, auto overclock at some points. But for us, we want to go above that, so that's why we do the modification in the in the software to actually go higher. Question on that? Nope. Good. Gonna... Adaptive means when the turbo mode is on, it will have extra uh, electricity. When it's static, on or not on, it will have the extra uh, settings too. For you guys, the core voltage is the most important one. And this one should be touched only if you have some issue. But to be honest, I don't think you will be using it today. It doesn't really matter. Uh, usually, you put that one at like 1.25. This one, you, the core voltage, you play with it only if you play with the turbo. So you can change the maximum turbo uh, multiplier, etc. But 
for us, we don't care if the CPU is going faster for three minutes or slower for five. We want it to go as fast as it can for all the time. That's going to be, that's actually the easiest way to do it. Uh, Turbo Boost, these are the settings. Um, so as I said, the CPU can auto overclock itself when it sees that maybe only one core of the CPU is being used for the past five seconds and the second one is not doing anything. So you can increase the frequency of this one, create a little more heat, but still in the uh, official, um, uh, you know, 65 watt or 45 watts um, envelope. Okay, so term, that's called thermal envelope. I don't want to get too technical because I, I can talk like three hours about that. <laughs> Five seconds in demand, like, okay, so I can, as I don't use the second one, I can just put higher on this one. So it's actually increased there and then you can use it. So that's the turbo boost power time window. That's the, the amount of time before the turbo mode kicks, kicks in. We want to be as low as possible because we want to kick, we want it to kick in as soon as we can. Okay. 1.25 volts for the multiplier. We apply. We go back to the benchmark, run the benchmark. I should have actually done that just before and continue explaining because we're going to have to wait for the benchmark to do, to run now. Okay. So the benchmark is still running on the, on the background. So we changed the setting of the car. We changed the tire of the car. We changed, uh, some uh, settings of the, um, we changed some of the settings of the uh, of the engine. So now we are uh, trying to see what's uh, what is uh, going on. Um, I think that actually Timote is uh, actually uh, watching the live chat and asking me the questions. It's a little bit weird because I have the feedback from the live as well. Okay. I do have the feedback in the, that's really, it's very weird to hear myself talking. It's like, I do talk and then five seconds after I hear myself, they <laughs> said it. Okay. You can see 72 degrees, still fine. We still have some margin to go. Um, we have the two core enable. We are at four gigahertz. We can see four gigahertz as well here on the top right. And 1.25 volts. So yeah. We are, uh, we'll be waiting for the, you know, the benchmark to finish. We'll have a score, and we once again will submit online to compare the score and uh, and see how we can do it. Good question. So there's more, more higher frequency residing in the higher score. Usually, yes. But if you're too high, the CPU will reduce itself. So that means it will lose performances. So the frequency by itself, it's just one parameter of what we can have. If you increase the frequency, you increase the performances because you increase the, the way it works. But sometimes, you can have, you can increase a lot the frequency, but it doesn't improve the benchmark. For example, here we're using a CPU benchmark. So it, it does only rely on the CPU power. If I check here, we have graphics. I can change this, it will not affect the score because this XTU benchmark, it's only for the CPU, only for the uh, calculation of the CPU. So if I increase the graphic part of the CPU, it won't change anything. If I do a graphic benchmark, I will have some improvement from the CPU, but most of the improvement will come from the graphic card. So that's, you always need to find the balance in your system to, to find that. Uh, this benchmark, XTU, can be influenced by the, the CPU calculation power, the memory calculation of the memory speed. So if you change your memory settings, you will be able to change the, say, the the score as well. But for now, I think just the frequency will be like quite good. I think we will explain the, uh, to the people if they want to. Yes, you can change the memory, but you cannot change the memory easily right in the software for this hardware. 
good point regarding the hardware. We are using uh, the Seasonic PSU. The Seasonic is the partner of the event. So all the world tour, we will do seven events like this in the world. And for the seven world tour, Seasonic uh, provide the power supply. So that's actually good power supply. We like them. And uh, for this event, we have HyperX that is doing memory. So memory kits, DDR3 and SSD. So all that for HyperX. And they are all the same uh, on all the same system. Uh, like uh, my, uh, the motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the name. I had the name in Portuguese. <laughs> the motherboard is from Gigabyte, and they are all the same kind of motherboard. Z97, Z97 chipset. We have the Z97 X SLI and the Z97 M DH D3H. It's it's similar in performances. It's the same chipset and the CPU G3258, 3258. And this CPU is the only CPU that is not a K. CPU from Intel that you can overclock. Intel, they have CPUs that if you want to overclock them, changing the multiplier, you need to have K on it. And this one. This one doesn't have K, but you can overclock it. So that's why we use it. It's a cheap CPU. It's fun. If you want to not try and not use your real computer to do it, you can always you know, try to find this kind of setup, and you can have fun with it. OK. So we did, we did the, the racetrack turn with the new car, new tires, and so on. And our score is now 266. Want to compare online if we do better than the others or where we are? Analyze. You guys will participate in the competition, but I will not submit for, for this one now. And OK, we are here. We were here before. We're like 202, uh, 226, and we're now 266. And there's someone that is just after us that could we could try to get him, like 272. But that's what you guys will be doing right there. Any question on that? Good? Perfect. OK, so pick one of the computer. They are all the same. Okay, so so basically, what is the safety measure that uh, exists in the CPU to not it to burn? You have um, it. It can reduce the frequency by itself when it's too hot, and it can shut down the computer if it's uh, if the voltage or if let's say you put too much voltage and too in a too big frequency, it will just crash and shut down the 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 computer. When it's really too high, yes. When it's really too high. Usually 100 degrees. Like 100 degrees. It can shut down before, but 100 degrees. There is no best temperature. The best temperature is as long as it's still working. <laughs> Okay, I will take all your questions uh, there during the uh, during the, the workshop because we have to move on on the workshop. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys online. I guess that uh, Timothy will uh, change that back. And if you have any questions, just let us know on the live chat as well. So guys, you can go and pick up some of the um, 